Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Nomad Pastor Podcast with Rick and Rob. How are you I, doing? I'm good. How are you? Man, I'm great. I'm good, great. good, good. I, I'm, uh, it's been a crazy week. <sighs> I mean, it's nuts. It's absolutely yeah. nuts. And I just, no, that's not it. That's not the text that we're looking that's for. That's not the one. That's not the one. So you may hear a text or calls or something. It's a big day today. It's for a me. very big day today for me. My oldest daughter, uh, my oldest biological daughter, uh, Morgan is uh, having uh, a grandson for me. Yeah. Yeah. Praise God. Yeah. Charles Henry the sixth. The sixth. Yeah. And we're going to call him Hank. And Love it. Today is her due date. So, yeah. so we may cut this short. We, this may be real short. <laughs> However, um, it, it, it's, um, it's a very exciting day. Yeah, it is. Praise God. Yeah, man. I'm excited. I'm very excited. I'm also, I'm so. When we talked about this earlier, this topic that we're going to have today, yeah. I, at first I was nervous about it, and then I thought, you know what? This is something that needs to be talked well, about. Well, it's definitely something that needs to be talked about, but I'm still nervous about it. I'm t- and this because is a requested topic, too, it, by It way. is a requested topic, but you know, the reason I'm nervous about it is, one, uh, it's been a crazy week. Yeah, it has. I always spend way too much time <laughs> researching what we're going to yeah. talk about. Yeah. And... Uh, I got home today at like uh, twelve thirty, mm-hmm. <laughs> and it's oh, and it's one, one o'clock, o'clock right, right now, so like thirty. And I, I've done nothing. <laughs> that, okay. So okay, we're that's, just going to rely fair. on what I that's, know and that's maybe fair. a little bit of Google. Well, I mean, we can do that. Yeah. So um, today's topic that and let's let it out of the background now. Yeah. So we're gonna t- today we're gonna talk about uh, you know we did a podcast about uh, what it looks like to be a Christian man, right? Right. So now we want to talk about what it looks like to be a Christian woman. Right. And we're probably the wrong people to talk about. Them. Most definitely the wrong. Ones right. To talk because about at this. the end of the day, we're, neither of us. We're dudes. We're dudes. Right. But it was a requested topic. Yeah. And so here we are. And it's one actually that is is um, I, I was kind of um, I was kind of shocked at first that that we were asked to do this. Yeah. But at the same time, I was kind of I was kind of honored. I that, that we would be trusted with this topic. Yeah, because it's not an easy topic. It's not at all. And I think, um, well, I'm sure we'll get into it, but I think far too often when men read some things in the Bible, oh yeah, they're like, you're supposed to submit to me. Uh, or, uh, yeah. <laughs> and, and we want to, uh, that's one of the things that I want to cover with yeah. today's topic is that yeah. submission thing. Because it is so uh, misunderstood. It, absolutely. On both sides of the spectrum, though, by men and women. Absolutely. And I think there are some women who are like, well, I ain't going to submit. Yeah. Well, that, that's not really what it means. Right. 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 Yeah. You want to jump into that first? Let's go. Okay. Let's go. So, uh, I, because this is something that I have, I, I guess you would say, cultivated this definition over the years. Yeah. Uh, and in 53 years, it's taken me this long to really understand what the definition is like. Right. So and, and I, for everybody that's listening out there, I want you to stop right now. If you're listening on the podcast or if you're watching this on YouTube, yep. push the pause button. Go get a piece of paper and a, and a pen or a pencil because I want you to write this down. This is good. It's, you're going to need it. You're going to need it because this is this is Batmanology 101. Batman. I might. I need a pen and a piece of paper to write down Batmanology. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go. So um, the 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 basic definition of submission outside of man and woman marriage cohabitation, yep. right, yep. is to submit yourself or to place yourself under the authority of somebody else. Correct. Right. So if, if you look back historically, uh, the way that uh, when a king went in and conquered another nation, the conquered king would come before the conquering king yeah and he would lay out spread eagle in front of him we've yeah. talked about this before i think right? i think we have if you've yeah, watched yeah. it's kind of like if you've watched game of thrones right exactly bend a knee right 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 like i won it's time for you to bend a knee right right so the the submission definition that i've cultivated over the years is this to place yourself willingly under the authority mm. of someone yeah, that's now, a big one. Now, here's here's where the kick is. Ladies, you're not a doormat. Hear me say that. Yeah. You are not a doormat. Men, she is not a doormat. And you do not have a right to tear your wife down. Amen. Physically, 
mentally or spiritually. Right, because that that submission, right, 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 it doesn't say you can be mean. No, it doesn't. No, right? and and here's the kick with it. But it, but it does say men have to too. Right, exactly, and that's where I'm going with it. Right, okay, go ahead. So, so uh, to willingly place yourself under the authority of someone. So that authority, men, you have to be, um, you have to be honorable enough to give her three things: love, yep, protection, yep, and provision. Absolutely. Okay. There's no other reason for somebody to submit if you don't give them those. Exactly. Things. So men have to be honorable enough for women to place themselves under that. Here's the here's the flip side of that. Women, you have to be able to be honorable enough to be loved, protected, and provided for. Yes. So that, in a nutshell, is Batmanology's definition <laughs> of submission. Okay. All right. So when we think about that, right, because it says, you know, men, women should submit. Right. It's not saying women should be slaves. No, not at all. Right? Not at all. It never it never says that. And I think that's uh, one of the drastic misconceptions, right? Huge misconception and and to the point to where it has caused issues in relationships. Absolutely. Uh, that have uh, blown up like nuclear. Yeah. Yeah. It has, you know, especially especially when you have two Hard-nosed people that are coming together. You're not going to lord over me. That's well, right. That's <laughs> you right. know, that's, and, right. that's right. Well, you ain't any more than anyone. You know, right. <laughs> so. Right. And and part of that is, you know, women they want to be loved. They do. They want to be provided for. And they they want to be, be protected. They want to be protected. Mm-hmm. But they don't want to be um, dictated to. Yes. Right. They don't want to be belittled. Never. They don't want to be forced. Right. They don't want demands. Right. Right? Right. Where, where's the dinner? Yeah. Go make me a sandwich. Yeah. yeah then I, then where's my chicken pot pie? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I like chicken pot pie, by the way. <laughs> Can you tell? Right, right. But, but yeah, exactly. That that's And that's where that submission conversation goes stupid. That's right. Too many times. That's right. Because there's not that 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 cohesive understanding of... Women submit themselves to their husbands, but husbands also submit yourself to your wives. <laughs> That's right. You know, it's That's a team right. effort. It's not something that you can just go on a solo trip with. You know, there's um, there was a pastor. Um, his name is Joe McGee. I don't know if you ever heard of him. I don't think so. He does this little skit. About, I love skit about marriage. Yeah, it's like nine or ten minutes. You can find it on YouTube. Okay, Joe Hus- McGee, husband and wives. Right? Okay. And it's the best thing ever, uh-huh. right? And basically what it boils down to is it says that, you know, you married your exact opposite mm-hmm. as a gift from God, exactly. yeah. right? Stop yeah. fighting because they don't get you. They don't understand. Right. They don't do it your way. Stop. Stop the madness. Yeah, but figure out how to make it work cohesively together. And he tells this story and <laughs> – it's totally something I would do. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> but he, he tells this story how him and his wife were driving through the countryside looking at the fall leaves changing colors. Uh-huh. And they're drinking coffee. And he's just like mm, having a good old time. And his wife's like, Joe, uh, think we, you want to stop and get some more coffee? He's like, nope, nope, I'm good. <laughs> just keeps driving. About 30 minutes later, she's pissed off. And he's like, what are you pissed off about? Nothing. nothing. You just being yourself. <laughs> That's exactly what I would right? do. Yeah. And he's like, well, what do you mean? He's like, oh, you didn't want to stop. I wanted coffee. He goes, you didn't say you wanted coffee. You asked if I wanted coffee. I didn't want coffee. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of like, it's kind of right? like, you know, how many times have you pulled up at the Burger King drive through and, and you say, you know, I'd like a Big Mac. Or a Whopper with cheese, yeah. large fries, and a Dr. Pepper. And they, yeah. and what they say, okay, so you want, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. That's, yeah. Kind of, that's a lot of, of conversations, yeah. you know, that happen in a marriage. Series. But he, he, he seriously talks about the differences. And if you've ever been around Linda and I a lot, you've probably heard us say things like, um, well, it's just the butter. Yeah. Right. Well, that's an inside joke to what Joe McGee tells us. Right? Mm-hmm. And he says they did this study in London or in the United Kingdom where they took 50 husbands and wives, 50 couples, mm-hmm. and they put them in an apartment they had never been to. Right. And 
They tell the wife, cook the dinner, do this, set everything on the table, get it ready, but put the butter in the front of the fridge on the second shelf. Right? Front of the fridge, second shelf. Second shelf. So when the husband asks for dinner, you tell him it's in the fridge and he'll go get the butter. 47 of the 50 men open the fridge. I don't see the butter. <laughs> You're kidding. I can't find the butter because they they don't have um, – men have better long-range vision than they do short-range vision. That's why men are like 70% more likely to be T-boned in a car accident than women because they don't see it coming. So – it- Wow. It's, Wait, but careful with that kind of statistic uh, because you're going to let it out of the bag that women actually may be better drivers than men. <laughs> well, I'm just saying. No way, whatever. But there's a bunch of other statistics that he goes through. And he's like, it's right. all public library stuff, American Medical Association. You can find it all, right? Uh-huh. And he says, um, because of that, whenever they say, hey, I can't find something, like where's the butter or I can't find my socks in the drawer, just tell them to take two steps back. <laughs> Oh, there it is. There it is. Because <laughs> they can see it now. I'm, uh, I'm going to have to try that without letting anybody know I'm trying it. Yeah, you know seriously. What I mean? So whenever I can't find anything, Linda's like, it's the butter. Ah. And, and, and honestly, if I take two steps back, I can probably see it. And see the butter? Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. So, mm. All right. So uh, I looked up right before this, right? Because I, yeah. you know, I didn't have any time. I was like, what, is it, what, is it, what does it look like to be a good Christian godly woman? Mm-hmm. There's like 10 characteristics that somebody lists on the on the internet. Okay. Lay them out. Um, the first one is she enriches the lives of other people. Mm. True. Right? True. And we can talk about each one of these or we can yeah. do whatever, right? Uh, the next one was she has good intentions towards other people. Mm-hmm. So I'd agree with that one too. I'd agree with that. She desires the best for your home and your environment. Yeah. Yeah. She plans ahead. Okay. She makes wise investments. It doesn't necessarily mean financial. Right, 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 right. right. Time, t- time, time, money, whatever. and talents, yeah. She helps the needy. Uh-huh. She speaks with wisdom. Yes. Absolutely. Most right? definitely. She avoids idols or, or idleness. Yeah. Um, she has good character, mm-hmm. and she fears God. I think fears God to be number one. I would agree with that. Uh, I'm so uh, hold on a second. L- let's look at uh, Proverbs thirty-one real quick. That's absolutely right. Right. So um, uh, okay. So starting in verse ten. So your first one was what? What was the first one? Again? Enriches the lives of others. Okay. She is far more. And, fresh- and this is based on Proverbs thirty-one. Yeah, I, I, everything that I heard in yeah. that list comes from, from verse ten through thirty-one. 30, ten through thirty-one. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I, and and I don't think, I don't think we can have a conversation about what it looks like to be a a Christian godly woman without either that list or Proverbs thirty-one. I, I agree. You know, right. you, you can't. No. And and so. With that, one of the things that stuck out to me is she's got to have a good character. Yeah. Right? Uh, And having a good character for a woman, um, to me, has a very well-rounded approach to everything that she does. Not just what she thinks, not just what the public perceives of her. I think she's modest. Absolutely. I think she's modest in her talk. Yeah. In her appearance. Yeah, absolutely. And in and, 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 and her thoughts. I agree with that. The one thing I was surprised that, and I, and I know it's based on Proverbs 31, but I think somewhere in there, right, it's like she's got to she's gotta be in prayer, right? Mm-hmm. She's got to be in prayer. And I say that because, like, without my wife in prayer, yeah, right, yeah. I don't know where I would be today. I, I, I'm the same way. Right. Exactly. I mean, yeah. she's praying for me every day. Yeah. And I'm not saying I don't pray, right? I, I, I do. But, right, but knowing knowing but, that when you walk out the door that you have that support. That protect like she's got a direct right. a direct line to God. Yeah. Right? Like Yeah. You know. I, yeah. I heard um uh what was her name? Uh, Priscilla. Priscilla Shire. Shire say yeah. you know, 
why don't people pray as much as they should? Right. That's your. That's how you get heaven. That's a here, lifeline. Yeah. Right. That's how you bring the glory of heaven to earth. Mm-hmm. And she says, I don't want to wait until I get to heaven to have a relationship with God. No. Yeah. Well, uh, you, if you wait that long, you're not gonna you're not gonna be in right. heaven. Right. That's right. I mean, that's that's the bottom line. You know, I, and I I agree with that. I, yeah. To have to have someone to have a and and my mom is a perfect example of this. Yeah. You know. In the times when um, I was away from what I knew to be right, yeah, when I knew uh, I was in active addiction, when I was away from the Lord, you know, I know that my mom was continually praying for me. I, yeah. I know that in that, and my dad too, but my mom, you know, is, is there's something about your mama. Well, yeah, she's in know? that war room, right? She's right. like, yeah, she's got the Bible out. She's sitting in the corner, right? Right. Just, right. We're going to work. Oh well, yeah, we're doing we're putting work in today, boy. Yeah, you know, and and um, mom, of course, my mom was a high school English teacher. Okay, you know, so she knew how to how to handle <laughs> things. Yeah, and and, um, and and but mom was always and for me and and my brother both. You know, she was always, and that's one of the that's one of the attributes of a Christian woman that I gauge, um, what my wife is like. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, I, yeah, and yeah, what yeah. I want my daughters to be like. Yeah, like I and I agree with that. Like I didn't, you know, we've talked. I didn't grow up in the church, right, right? Right. But I look at my wife, and I think that's that's it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You know, we 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 have struggles. Oh, and, and right. Everybody like you're going look, to. She's got to deal with me every day. Oh, well. Right? I mean, let's be honest. Bless her heart. I know. God <laughs> I'm bless, praying for you, God Linda. bless you, and everybody should say a prayer for Linda. Exactly. She has to deal with Her name gotta, is Linda. She's got to put up with me. But <laughs> but, but that's my gauge, right? When I look yeah. at it, because I didn't grow up in a Christian house. Now, my, mo- my mom believes in God. Right. She's a great person. Mm-hmm. Um, but but when I think about like godly women, my gauge is my, is my wife. Yeah, I get right. that. I understand. And, and she, you know, she'll say, "Well, I just wish I had the faith that you have." I'm like, "No, you, come on." Yeah, <laughs> you know you do. Right. You don't give yourself you know, enough credit. She doesn't. That. She doesn't. Yeah. She's really hard on herself. But you know, all of those things that I think about, you know, from a Proverbs 31 aspect, right? Mm-hmm. Does she enrich the lives of other people? Absolutely. Oh yeah. Yeah. Absolutely, right. and Rebecca does too. Oh yeah, most right. definitely. Most she, definitely, she really does. Right. And and the funny thing about it is, she's Rebecca's so humble about everything that she does. Yeah, she so is. We we uh, um, <laughs> we took took some food over to Morgan Wednesday night, and yeah. um, Morgan is obviously nervous. You know, is this her first? This is her first. Okay, baby, okay. You know, so. She she's obviously nervous, and and Rebecca was just she was just so naturally consoling, you know. And oh, baby girl, just sit down right here. Let me put this up for you, you know. Yeah. I mean, and, and so uh, the nurturing part of that, you don't necessarily have to be a mother to be nurturing, to True. be a Christian True. woman, you know. True. But at the same time, that's part of it, you yeah. know, because you're caring for the needs of others. You're taking yeah. care of things. Yeah. And even though Morgan is not her biological child, she still looks at her as her daughter. And Morgan looks at her as, you know, another mama. Right. right. And so uh, to see that interaction and to know that um, what Rebecca's mindset was in that was – uh, to make sure, number one, that Morgan's taken care of. Because on the way home, she asked about three times. She was like, are you sure we should have done that? Just stop because yeah. we, we did the right thing. That's you know? right. And, That's right. And this, this is, it's, but, you know, a lot of – I think that second guessing is just love. It is. It is. Right? You know, I think a lot of people could say whatever they want. But, you know, the love from a mother, a stepmother. Sure, uh, sure. You know, just another woman like look, yeah exactly I, there's things that linda has you know women friends mm-hmm. i can't provide no right and and god never intended for me to be able to provide everything for exactly. her exactly right? right it's about having those relationships in that community and but you can't have that if you don't have good intentions right right if you don't enrich other people's lives sure 
and and that that's one of the things that uh, as a Christian woman, that in enrichment in other people's lives, yeah, yeah. Is, is that paying it forward type of thing that people will relate back to that uh, with. Absolutely, like there's this um, Linda's like kind of doing like one on one discipleship, walking with another girl, mm-hmm. and the girls. In her twenties, I yeah. think maybe young thirties, mm-hmm. right? And you know, she she you know she gave her a Bible, and, mm-hmm. and they kind of go back and forth. But Linda was like always like you know this is great that I give you this Bible and you're reading it, but you should you should go find one that just really speaks to you, mm-hmm. right? So she found one that just really speaks to her. Now she's in it. She's like every three, four, five times a day texting Linda, like, what does this mean? What does yeah. this mean? What does that mean? See, that, that's, right? and, and that's another thing that, that, that spiritual maturity comes from yeah. living out what that Christian woman is. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And when I think about the amount that, that this is enriching the life of this girl mm-hmm. and the amount that is enriching the life of Linda. Yeah. Right. Yeah. The blessings that she's getting out of it. Cause she don't have the answer to all the questions. Right. Right. Like, what do you mean women are supposed to be silent? <laughs> <laughs> right. What does Paul mean when he says that? And those are yeah. the questions she's getting. And she's like, hold yeah. on, hold on. Wait just a second. Yeah. Let's, let's talk through this. Well, Right. How how was Linda raised? What what what? She know. was raised Christian, but not like active. Okay, right. Uh, have have a conversation with Pentecostal woman about what <laughs> women being silent. Right, right, <laughs> right. You know right. her anyway. So, yeah. yeah, no, that ain't happening. That ain't happening. Yeah. <laughs> that ain't they, happening. And then she'll start off that conversation with, "Now listen, I do not want to be in the pulpit, but let me tell you." That's right. That's right. <laughs> I don't think a woman should be in the pulpit, but yeah. yeah, yeah. Timothy was taught by his grandmother and his mother. That's right. Exactly, That's right. honey. Yeah. I know what you're saying. Yeah, I get it. Yeah, I get it. yeah. So, so there's some of these things in here, right? Like where it says she plans ahead. And that's Proverbs thirty one fifteen. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It says, she rises also while it's still night and gives food to her household and assigned tasks to her mates. Mm-hmm. I think that's often misinterpreted by men. That they have to be the first one up? Well, I think it's like, well, where's my breakfast? Yeah. Where's my dinner? How come you didn't plan for dinner? Yeah. So how do you interpret that? Right? How do you say, hey, well, man, don't be a, you know. I, I think the planning ahead um, gets pushed into a chore list. Uh, yeah, I would agree with that. You know what I mean? It, it, yeah. So, it, we, so how would you answer it if a girl if a girl came to you right and said, mm-hmm. "How this says that I'm supposed to plan ahead and get up early and cook?" Mm-hmm. Well. Uh, well, I'd have to think about that because I don't want to. I don't want to sound. I don't want to sound unchivalrous about it, but at the same time, I don't want to sound chauvinistic about yeah. it. So I, I would probably answer it this way: in your planning, and, and that doesn't necessarily mean that you are the only one that does domestic duty. Yeah, I think absolutely. Here's what I would also say is that a lot of times we have to think about the Bible. When we're trying to understand it, we have to think about what the culture was then. True. Right? Culture then was very much that the that's the women were supposed to be at home. Right. Right. Except for the youngest girl. Yeah. Right. Right. Because generally the youngest girl was actually shepherds. True. Until right? they reached the age of 12. That's right. Right. That's right. right. But – so, you know, you got to look at the culture. And, and when you think about the planning, it didn't didn't necessarily mean cook, right? Right. Make sure your household is in order. Is in order. Mm-hmm. Make sure your household doesn't go hungry. Mm-hmm. Right. And that could be hungry for food, hungry for faith, hungry for spirituality. Right. Right. right? Maybe you're getting up early is to pray for your family. Mm-hmm. And that's how you're providing them with, with that food, so to speak. Right. Spiritual right? food. Spiritual food. Mm-hmm. And so I think about it and I say, yeah, that's kind of in the culture. Like you're supposed to get up and make sure, but, but excuse me, that's not necessarily how I personally would interpret it. And I'm not trying to say like, this is what it means. I'm just saying there's a lot more to be, right. you know, a planner than 
But at the same time, we need to be careful. I, I agree. When we say, well, the culture is so much different now than what it is, but the word is still true. The word is true. The word is true. And, and, and I, I'm not, and that's why I was saying I have to be somewhat chivalrous about yeah. this, but not chauvinistic and, and not go to one side or the other to lean too far to make the teeter totter unbalanced. Yeah. There has to be, <clears throat> there has to be something uh, where, like what you were saying, that planning may be in providing you know, spiritual food or, yeah. or, or, or you, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. and, and we, we talked earlier about a few minutes ago about Timothy and his grandmother and his mother and how they yeah. trained him, yeah. you know, and, and I had the same thing, you know, my mom and, and now my dad and, and my uncles and there were other men in, in my life, you know, so I was very well rounded in the way that I was raised. Yeah. <clears throat> but I can tell you, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I can tell you some of the things that stick out most to me in my childhood from a spiritual perspective were Miss Bell teaching my Sunday school class. Yeah. My granny teaching my Sunday school class. Okay. My mom being involved in things that we were doing in our classes in vacation Bible school. Yeah. You know what I mean? So those things – now, I, there are male role models that I had growing up that, you know, taught me things that, that you know, that I'm still, I'm still living out daily. However, the importance of the love of the Word of God was taught to me by Miss Bell Watson. Yeah. And, 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 and Miss Bell's been gone for uh, 40 years probably. But you still remember I still remember the yeah. way that she taught me the love of the Word of God. Yeah, you know those are that's that's the that's that Proverbs thirty one fifteen, yeah. right? You know, yeah. Because had she had she not prepared herself to show all of us kids, yeah, in my youth group at the time, what right. the importance of knowing Scripture and loving Scripture and and and, and um. There's no telling. Yeah, and she planned for that, right? She did. She got up she, early. She did. She did. Right. Most she would definitely get up planned. early. She would plan right. for it. She would make sure that 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 was not something you were hungry for. Right. That that it was there. That right. she provided it for us. Yeah. Exactly. You know, part of that scripture also says that you assign tasks to your mates. Uh huh. A lot of people don't have mates today. Well, most and that's why I say you got to think about. You know, yeah, there's different. That, yeah, there's, there's a difference, difference in culture. Right. 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 Like, what, what do you mean? So, so I don't have maids. I got some kids. I'll assign them some tasks, right? <laughs> Go mow the yard. <laughs> I mean, if the shoe fits, right? Yeah. Uh, what size shoe do you wear again? Right. Put that right. puppy on. What about... Um, Keep going. Helps the needy. I, I'm kind of skipping through them, right? Oh, helps the needy. Here, uh, mm. And it's and it's Proverbs 31, 20. She opens and extends her hands to yeah, the poor. That's where I was And thinking. she reaches out her f uh, field hands to the needy. Mm-hmm. She opens her hands to the poor, reaches out her hands to the needy. Yeah. Um, th this this is um, Becca. I'm gonna brag on you for a minute, so get ready. <laughs> so this is where I get. Why do you bring me up in these things? Yeah. So um, Rebecca is involved in a ministry that is all ladies. Yeah. And and their their whole thing is to put together like backpack essentials mm -hmm. for the homeless. Yeah. And Rebecca has, I don't know, four or five of these little Ziploc bags. Yeah, we do it. We do it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. But, um, but, she, but they get together in, um, I think they've even put them in like a string pack. Okay. A little string backpack thing. Oh, you know, yeah, yeah. I've seen those. That's a great idea, actually. Yeah. 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 And, and so she's got four or five of them in the back seat yeah. at all times. Yeah. And, but this is something that, these ladies have come together, and uh, they had a bake sale a few months ago yep. to raise the money to get the funds to buy, mm. you know, these essential things that they put in these string packs. Yeah, and and then so these ladies have come together so that whenever there is a need, when they're in their, you know, they see something in their car, yeah, or whatever, yeah, yeah. there's reason to buy something, hand one out, right? So <clears throat> it goes beyond something th that simple. <laughs> But at the same time, it it is, um, 
friends well, friends that have just had surgery you know she's just had surgery and and you know there's a couple over here at church that's just had surgery and so we're going to make some meals and take over that you know right, she, right. she's the first one on the meal train yeah sign up i mean look linda's the same way yeah you know she is oh yeah, yeah. i mean we've had i don't know how many people stay at our house sure right we'll be in church and Somebody would be like, oh, so-and-so needs a place to live while their house is being remodeled or they're this or they're that. And this, <laughs> hey, guess what? We, we're going to have house guests. So I don't know how long. Yeah. Yes, dear. <laughs> uh, you remember the story about we I have know, a camper. I know. We have a camper. <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah. You know, she came back to me one day and said, they're, they're moving in next week. Oh, my. I'm like, okay. Here I'm we like, go. You know, but that's just what it is. Right. And she's got the bags in her in the back of her car now. Sure. Right? Little gallon bags. You know, I love to put one of the little Bibles in there that's just the New Testament problem. Yeah, the new Psalms. Per- Psalms right? Yeah. Yeah. Um you know, any I like to always give a Bible. Sure. Right. You know, I don't keep bags in my truck, but I always keep Bibles. Mm-hmm. Little five dollar gift cards or a five dollar Five dollar bill, right? I'll, right. Give a, I'll give you some money, but you're getting a Bible with it. Yeah, that's that's what's in my my little center console pull out yep. thing. Yeah, yep. yeah, yeah. So that, that that whole help the needy thing to me is it's not just for women. That's I know not. It says, that's I know not. it says it in Proverbs thirty one, right? That you know she does these things. It's like how to be this good godly woman. But I mean, that's men too. But ho- let me ask you something though, Rick. So uh, we we're on this topic about Christian women, yeah, right, and yeah. and and we understand and know and and talk about and even preach about that's not just a, to be hospitable yeah. and to help the needy yeah. and things like that. that's not just for the women, yeah, right. So <clears throat> when we when we talk about uh, those two things, not just being a woman's job, but also in the vein of, of a Christian woman. Yeah. Can you discount the fact that looking for opportunities to serve is, it should be, and is high on the priority list of a Christian woman? I think it should be. It's got to be. Yeah. And and that's one of the that that's one of the ways that you find to serve though. Yeah. Right. I, I think it's got to be, and I think partly because they're smarter than us. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> well, I mean, they can see close up, and we can't. Right. Right. right, right. <laughs> it's the butter. Uh, uh, you know, I mean, I'm, I don't say that just kind of off the cuff, right? No. But I I truly believe that you know, for the most part, women are smarter than men. Especially in a service area like Absolutely. that. Absolutely. I, yeah. I don't feel what they feel. Yeah. I don't have exactly. that emotion that they have. And so, you know, Linda will go, did you do you feel that? Like somebody here needs help. Mm-hmm. I'll go, oh, no. <laughs> like I'm oblivious. Yeah. I'm, I'm looking up another <laughs> scripture. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. She's like, no, nope, somebody needs us. And we're gonna, I'm going to find it. Mm-hmm. Right, and so praise God that she does that. Amen. She, and she yeah. does; she'll find it, right? Mm-hmm. And I'll be like, "All right, I'm going along for the ride." Yeah, but but that's part of it, right? And I hate to say it like that, but they're smarter than us. They feel things we don't feel. They they see things we don't see. Sure, and we have sure. to have them. We got to, right? Yeah, yeah. So so when that happens, and 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 let me let me back up just a little bit. My wife is probably the most extroverted introvert you'll ever meet. You know yeah, that, right? Absolutely. And, yeah. You know, and yeah. she's such a homebody, but yeah. at the same time, when she's in public, whether it be at church or the mission or at right. an event or right. whatever, she is very aware and cognizant of everything that's going on around her. Yes. Yeah. And and she is always looking. I can't tell you how many times we've been at the mission. And because when we do like the the altar call yeah. at the end, Rebecca's yeah. always in the back. Yeah, you know, and I look, I've seen her go. Hey, you. Yeah, yeah. she's po- that's she, what I was going to say. She, she is pointed at me or somebody and be like, and, "This dude needs somebody right now, right now." Yeah, come pray for him. Yeah, she, and, right? and that's what I was saying. Yeah, she and and a lot of times it's not because of yeah. a look they give her she, or because she's noticed. She just feels it. 
Well, and she and absolutely. I know she's she's pointed. She likes to point to you and go, she "Hey, does. come here." Yeah, she does. <laughs> she does. She does it on purpose because she knows I'm, she, you're I'm gonna, an introvert. <laughs> 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 that. And she does love to pick yeah. on you. Yeah. But that's all right. I, I don't mind. I don't right. Mind. So that all of this, to me, kind of goes to that next thing, right? Which is she speaks wisdom. Uh-huh. Right? They speak wisdom into our lives. Right. And I don't think we, when I say we, I'm using men in a very general term. Mm-hmm. But I don't think we give them enough credit. Never. For the wisdom that they have. Right. For the relationship that they have mm-hmm. with God. Right. We, we don't. And, and because is that because of a pride thing or is it because we have the we have the mentality that the weaker sex is weaker in all things? I think it's uh, I don't think it's weaker, but maybe I'm wrong. I, I think it's so much pride. Right. When you're raised, when I was raised, it's like you're the man. Mm-hmm. Be the man. Take control, provide right. for your family. You're responsible for everything. Mm-hmm. Where I wasn't told that I needed a woman. Yeah. Right? I wasn't taught that that the woman provided whatever I could provide. Mm-hmm. Right? Or had a different set of things that she could provide that I needed. Mm-hmm. Right? It just wasn't modeled for me. Right. And so coming to Christ and recognizing that, like, I— I, whew, I need that. Yeah, um, my dad tells a great story about that. And and um, when he and my mom <clears throat> were first married, you know, they were juniors in college. Okay. You know, and and so they lived in a little eight by thirty five trailer that my grandpa, had, you know, brought down to Searcy, Arkansas, and that was their first house. So they moved out of that and and uh, moved to uh, once they graduated, they moved to Mountain Home, Arkansas, and. Um, Dad, mom, and dad came back to where I'm from in Malden, Missouri, okay. to visit my grandparents for the weekend. And Dad said, uh, "Dad said he he went to my grandpa and he said, Dad, I ain't talked to you." And grandpa said, "Okay." He goes, um, "Thinking about buying a car, and I need to know what you think about it." Hmm. And my grandpa looks at him and goes, "Don't you have a wife now?" <laughs> yeah. Isn't that your responsibility to talk to her and not me? Dad said, point taken. Yeah. It, and and that that was— And it is, though. It, it is. But that's the thing. We, we overlook—and I had to learn that lesson the hard way, too, mm-hmm. you know, about the wisdom that, that my spouse has, the wisdom that my wife has. Yeah. And it's not just about one particular thing or, or anything else. Well, at all. Uh, yeah. Right. It's about everything. That's that's my point. Yeah. My, my mom may not have known just exactly what a, a simple interest car loan was laid out as. Yeah. My mom may not have known just exactly, and, and I'm, I don't know this because right, I right. wasn't was, around at the time, but yeah, yeah. What, what I'm saying is she might not have known just exactly every single budgetary item that they had to account for, right? but the wisdom that she could, that she could provide in making the decision of what they could or could not afford or what they needed to do or didn't need to yeah. do at that time yeah. shouldn't have been overlooked. And and that was the lesson that my grandpa was telling my dad. Yeah, you know, don't yeah. you have a wife now? Yeah, but I think that's much more than just the wisdom, right? I think so too. Right, because in Proverbs thirty one twenty seven it says she looks well to how things go in her household, uh-huh. and does not eat the bread of idleness. Right, right. So when your when your mom's like, she may not know this or she may not know that, but she's looking after everything. Exactly. Right. Right. She's making sure that that everything's in order. Mm-hmm. Right now, Linda does this for us. Amazing, yeah. Right, she makes sure stuff's in order. Right, I don't got to worry about it. Yeah, praise God. I I'm, 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 I literally bring you know my paycheck and go. Well, here you go. Yeah, you know I, I keep a little bit of it so that I can do. Yeah, you know ministry stuff, ministry right? stuff, yeah. club stuff. You yeah. know, and I I've got a little bit of Amazon money. Yeah, but yeah. other than that, I'm you know here, the majority of it goes. You know, well, I mean, you know, like we, we have this new rule because uh, you said a little bit of Amazon money. Right? <laughs> yeah. So I have an Amazon problem. Okay. 
Um, so we have this new rule because Linda's, you know, protecting us. She's that Proverbs 31 woman. Right, right. She, this, we don't have any idols. So now I'm not allowed to purchase anything on Amazon. Uh-huh. I can put it in the cart. Right. But she has to order it. She has to order it and approve it. And approve it. And vice versa. Okay. So if she wants to order something from Amazon, she can't push order. She has to put it in the cart. Mm-hmm. And I have to push order. Okay. Our Amazon deliveries have reduced by 90%. Seriously? Seriously. Have you had any today? No. I, 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 hold on. No. It's reduced by 90% because before I go to her, I'm thinking of the questions she's going to ask me because she's being a good steward. Uh-huh. Right? Do you have this already? <laughs> That's always the first one. <laughs> well, wait a minute. I might have one, right? No. Yeah. What are you going to need it for? Right. How How much use is there? Right? Have you really considered? So she's asking, she's going to ask me some questions that I got to answer. Yeah. So it removes that impulse. Okay. Right? right. So now I'm trying to think about like, what is she going to ask? Okay. Yeah. I don't have it. Yeah. I do need it for this. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think I could ask for it. But she's got to do the same thing. Okay. Right? So now instead, because I'm going to ask quite like, what do you need that for? I think I saw five of those. Yeah. Right? Do you really need another purse? Okay. Let, 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 <laughs> Go ahead. So let's talk about purses for a minute. Okay. All right. So we, you're talking about Amazon purchases and, yeah. and having to approve each other's purchases, right? Yeah. I actually pick out Rebecca's purses. Okay. But there's a there's a method to my madness when I do it. Okay. I know, I know what she likes in a purse. Okay. I know how she carries the purse. Absolutely. So the purse has got to have three things with it. Okay. Number one, it's got to have enough area of, of carry ability. Yep. Let's call it that. Carry ability. Okay. Love but it. it can't be giant. That's right. Okay. Number two, it has to have organizational properties in it. Okay. And number three, it's got to have a good throw. Like to throw it at you? You got to throw it up on your shoulder. Okay. Throw, right? throw it up on your you shoulder. You got to throw it up on your shoulder. Yeah. Not a throw. It's a throw. A throw. Okay. You got to throw it up on your shoulder, right? So I, I, she will not buy a purse hmm. to this day until I test the throw. Okay. And if it, because if it'll go over my forearm, my, my elbow, yeah. it's going to fit her. That's right. No, it will. Even it if will. she has on a coat. That's true. Right? Oh. So in that working together yeah. thing right there, yeah. you know, she will not buy a purse. And she's been carrying this purse that she's carrying right now. And I've told her, I said, look, let's just go purse shopping. Yeah. And I don't want to. She's probably had this thing six years. Yeah. Right? And it's falling apart. Does, and, she have a, does she have a brand of purse that she likes? No. Okay. The cheaper, the better. Oh, well, I love the sound of that. But, but here's the thing. We've bought cheap purses before, and I and I tell her, look, just let's get something that's got good quality. You know, I don't care if it's eighty yeah. dollars or if it's you know twenty dollars. Yeah. If it's got good quality, let's yeah. find it. I'm not worried about if it's under a certain price yeah. or not. Have you guys ever? Linda loves Coach purses. Oh yeah, that's that's our go to. Um, mainly because they have a lifetime warranty. I don't know if you knew that. I did not know that. Yeah, and the history of the the. The coach is that the guy used to make baseball mitts. I knew that. Right. And so he, you know, he expanded out into purses. And so they have a lifetime warranty. You break a zipper, send it back to him, I'll fix it. Yeah. Well, I, I'm I'm getting to a point to where I'm ready to sit down and make a purse for her. Yeah. You know, you in go. the leather shop. Yeah, there you go. But the problem too. The the problem is my, not have the right dye. Yeah, that's the thing. That's right. And you so can't that, make it shine the same way. Right. So that gets back to okay. So I need this. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, and she's like, like you know, she'll be like, "Do you really need it? <laughs> it's for you. It's for you. <laughs> <laughs> and anything else I can make in the future. That's right. Can. That's right. So we have. You're talking about the the Amazon the thing. We have a thing to where we have a spending limit. Okay. Like if it's under a hundred dollars, yeah, I'll still tell her about it, but I don't have to have approval for it. Okay, and she's the same way. Yeah. Anything over a hundred dollars, we have to discuss. Yeah, I'm not sure about that one. 
<laughs> well, I, I mean, we have to discuss we're, it. We're baby stepping into this because of, you know, Amazon. Amazon. It's working. <laughs> Hello, my she, name is Rick. I have an Amazon problem. She, <laughs> Glad you're here, Rick. Yeah. Day one. Can I get my day one chip? <laughs> yeah, my blue chip. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But, you know, I mean, and, and she wants to expand into everything. I, I, I can see that. I can see how it works. Yeah, but but it, it, it's been working. I'll tell you that. Well, good. So, all right. Uh, the last one that we should probably try to talk about a little bit more is uh, she fears God. Mm-hmm. Right? Most definitely. And it's Proverbs 31, 30. I'm not going to read it, but that's what no. it is, right? And that fear of God, I think, is important, but I think people misinterpret what it means to fear God. I believe that's true. So what do you think? What do you think it is? So to fear God is to hold a reverence um, in, in, in a, a way that uh, they show, that we show a servanthood. Yeah. I, I, I mean, it's not now. Should we fear the wrath of God? Absolutely. That's what I thought it meant at first. I thought, like, uh, you know, you go to the the fire and brimstone churches. Yeah. Right. Hell fires raining down. Yep. I thought, whoa. <laughs> yeah, I'm afraid of that. Yeah, I'm afraid of that too. Right. But at the same time, it, it, it's a it's a holy reverence for uh, glorifying Him and everything. Right. I I agree with that. So how does how does a woman fear God? How does she? Show that. I think she shows that uh, in the way that she raises her children. Mm. I I'm, I really believe that. Yeah, I could see that. Right, the way you raise your kids mm-hmm. shows a fear of God because you're you're holding them to a um, a godly level. Right, a godly standard. A godly standard. That's a good word for it. And and teaching them. Uh, teaching them godly ways and how to learn about God, how to read Scripture, how to learn Scripture, yeah, how to pray, yeah. And I think fear is also about um, obeying, mm-hmm. right? Because you got to obey, right? right? If you're not afraid, if you don't fear God, you don't obey. That's true, right? Because you're like, whatever, you know, that, that ain't no big deal. I'll catch it up later. Yeah. Yeah, no. I and I heard somebody say one time, and it kind of stunned me. Somebody said, "Why are you doing all this Christian stuff now? That's for when you're older." Uh, maybe, that be, maybe that should be our next. <laughs> that topic. should be another topic. Um, because even just recently, you know, Lynn and I were talking about, um, you know, if you, you know, once you're saved. Uh-huh. And but you st- you still you still sin. Yeah. Right. So what, like what's Absolutely. going on? Like how does this right. work? <laughs> right? Yeah. So it's probably a topic to have some point, you know. It is. It's it's something we can't go into in Not like, right now. In like 2 minutes. No. Because that's about what that's we got left. That's about what we got left. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so let's bring this to a head. Yeah. Okay, so we, we've we've talked a, a few points about uh, what we found based on Proverbs 31, uh, verses 10 through 31, yeah. about what it looks like to be a Christian woman. And and I, I, want, um, I want to encourage the women that are listening to us now. Uh, grow in, that's not it. That's not the text not I'm looking text. for. Okay. Grow in what you find in the Word. Don't just rely on what two knuckleheads on YouTube and a podcast tell you. Yeah, and here's what I would add to that, right? It's it's about your relationship with God. Exactly. Not your parents. And it has to be not your, your personal. Ex- yeah. That's the point, right? Not your parents, not right. your husband. You don't osmotically get it. Right, not your friends. Right, it's yours. It's your walk. It's your relationship. Mm-hmm. It's your faith. Right. And but it has to build and grow. Yeah, and that takes work. Lots, lots. So, uh, for the men that are listening, yeah, unmarried men especially, yeah. If you want to find a Christian woman, there's one thing you need to do first. 
We got to put God first. Well, that's true. But what you need to start with is you need to start on the first of the month and you need to start in Proverbs chapter one. Yeah. And then you need to read all the way through to Proverbs chapter 30 and stop. Yeah. Then you need to spend 30 more days in Proverbs chapter 31 verses 10 through 31 to figure out what (laughs) that woman's going to look like that you're looking for. That's right. And pray about it. And pray about it. Now, ladies, bear in mind when we say that it is your walk, it is your walk, but it is something that you need to walk out. Yeah. And you need to find the how to be in step with the Lord in it. Yeah. And you need to to make sure that, like we talked about at the beginning of the podcast with the submission thing, that, number one, you're worthy of, of that protection, that provision, yep. and that love. Amen. And that you find a man that is willing to give you that love, protection, and provision. That's right. That, I, yeah, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's a part of me that wants to add to it, but that's the way it is. That's And, and, and I'm not trying to, you know, do a mic drop here, but at the bottom line is yeah, that. Absolutely. That's it. Yeah. And, and 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 in doing that, you actually end up following those two greatest commandments. Yeah. Yeah. At the end of the day, that's the way it works. Yep. As long as you put God first in everything that you do, mm-hmm. you and your wife or future wife. Right. It'll all work out. It'll all work out. So, hey, we are so glad that you guys were with us today. I, I This has been as... Much as we didn't want to do this one, yeah, this has been a lot of fun. And and uh, to the requester of this, this is for you. You know who you are. That's right. That's right. Um, we we appreciate the opportunity to talk about that. Praise God. Yep. Yep. So, um, if you have another topic for us, if there's something that you would like to hear us ramble on about, send us an email at hello at nomadpastor dot org. Uh, we look at that very often and look for those topics and, yeah. and look for responses from you all about this. So yeah. reach out to us. And uh, in the meantime, always remember to love God. And love people. <laughs> <laughs>